Hello, Parasites. This is Ben Pronsky. I'm the voice of Eddie Brock and Venom in Marvel Spider-Man Maximum Venom. And you're watching the Venom Vlog. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we are going to talk about Marvel's Spider-Man Maximum Venom Episode 5 called Generations Part 1 and 2, because obviously it's two episodes but combined together for a one-hour special, and we are nearing the end of this season, and as you know from my review of Episode 4, I kind of left with the, on a down note, like I didn't really like Episode 4 too much, I thought a lot of it could have been condensed, I felt like some of it was kind of dragged out and a little bit unnecessary, and I understand the kind of the point of what they were going for and what they were trying to set up. Now I understand even more so after watching episode five, what they were trying to set up with Swarm and, and that, you know, that villain and, and kind of like what his goals were and how it feeds into the Jackal's goals, which feeds into Norman Osborn's goals. And so, yes, um, you know, I have a little bit more perspective watching this episode on the last one, but I still stand by my initial review of episode four, which is tough, you know, because as a fan and as a critic, you know, I really do like Doc Wyatt and Kevin Burke. They're great guys and they have shown a tremendous amount of support and love for this show by having, you know, us have the ability to interview Ben Pronsky and then the two of them and then also J.M. Demetrius. Like it's it's been a privilege and an honor to like, you know, have that connection with those guys. Um, so it's hard to be critical, you know, like in a negative way to people that you just respect and admire and who have been so nice to you. It really is. But I... I also have to be honest, and I, I so I like I said, I stand by my review of episode four, even now knowing some of the stuff that comes to light in this episode, it certainly changes my perspective on why some of the things uh, were happening in that episode four, but I still felt like it was a dragged out two-part episode. It felt like it could have been a single episode, um, and so, you know, I still stand by that, and like I said, it is hard to give negative criticism to people you respect and admire, um, but that's, you know... Probably the only real obstacle I have doing these YouTube videos and being like a reviewer or a critic is that sometimes you, you give negative reviews to people you really like. Like recently, Jerry Duggan on um, Savage Vendors Empire number one. I personally didn't like it, but some of you guys did. And that's why I always like to invite people who have opposing opinions. So if these creators do see, hey, oh, wow, Seek really didn't like my comic or he didn't really like my episode, like that's a bummer. You know, like, why didn't he like it? And I explain why. But then you guys in the comments might say why you did like it. And I think that if they're reading the comments and stuff, you know, and seeing that stuff, I, I hope that gives them that push and reminder that, okay, that's just Seek's opinion. It's not everyone's opinion. Um, because, yeah, that's all I'm given. It's just my opinion. But it still sometimes sucks to give a negative opinion about someone, you know, whose work you admire and like. Um, but this episode I thought was a step in a better direction. Obviously, it was symbiote related. It did pick up from episode three where, you know, someone grabs the seed. We find out that maybe that was Connors um, or maybe it was a chameleon or I don't know, like, but there's some cool twist in this episode that I actually didn't see coming. And I was, I was very happy about that. Um, and although it doesn't really tie into Venom, although the, the, you know, the synthetic suit that Norman Osborn creates in this episode is kind of based off of the sliver of Venom symbiote that Max had back in episode one of Maximum Venom, uh, Max Modell. I, it is based on that one, so you can kind of argue, all right, Venom technically has a presence in this episode, and I think you can hear remnants of Pronsky's voice within the Dark Goblin when, when he emerges. But um, but still, it's like, I don't know, it's 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 tough. Like, it's like, uh, you, you can argue that he's, Venom's technically there, and you can argue that he's not there at all. Um, so... You know, we are going to get into spoilers, so if you haven't watched this episode, you know, go check it out. You can check it on Hulu and, you know, probably um, the Disney app, if you have the Disney uh, app on your phone. It's like a Disney Kids app, um, you know, and so you can watch it there. <laughs> I don't think these are on Disney Plus yet. I almost said Disney Plus, so I had to stop myself. I think maybe after season three ends, they'll put on Disney Plus. Right now, seasons one and two are on Disney Plus. So if you ever want to go back and watch older episodes, um, you can. And that's probably good, too, because it might help you, you know get into this episode a little bit more because this kind of tries to wrap up stuff that apparently has been set up for a while. You have Jackal coming back. He's the uncle of Spider-Gwen, you know, Gwen's character. Um, they, I think they, they didn't want to call Miles Warren. I think his name is Raymond Warren in this one or something like that or something along those lines or Raymond Stacy or something. Um, 
I know that was like something from the cartoon previous seasons, but I still find it jarring. Like I just know Jackal is Miles uh, Warren and he's kind of like a creep towards Gwen Stacy. So having him as her uncle and then he still has a creepy thing of like wanting to turn her into another Jackal like he is um, instead of her being a spider person. Like, cause he's like, oh, I, I always saw that you looked up to me and that you liked me and your eyes would light up when I walked into a room and I'm like, or whatever he said that was kind of like along those lines, like you, you or he, your eyes lit up with uh, admiration or something like that. Um, so it wasn't as creepy, but it was still a little creepy. Um, so I was like, okay, that's a little like, like okay, I get it. Uh, you know, but he's, he's her uncle in this universe. And, um, and he wants to, I guess, turn her into a jackal because he sees a prodigy in her. He sees like a, you know, like a sidekick or something. Um, so whatever, I don't know. That's, that's that. That was like one part of the story um, that I was kind of like, eh, all right. But it, it gave Gwen something to do. And that's what I really liked about this episode. Um, I think May Cat was one of the writers on this episode. And I actually really admire May Cat. Um, I've gotten a chance to meet her a couple times. Um, sometimes she would come into the Lego store that I used to work at in, in Glendale out in uh, California. Um, and, uh, and she's written like Transformer stuff and other things. And uh, she seems like a really awesome person. And and I think she was also on the panel at D23 talking about uh, this show and everything. So, um, and then other stuff that she's done for like Disney and Marvel and stuff. So um, I, I like her writing style. I think she came up with a line in this show um, called uh, My Dad is Bees. Like there's a line that Miles says where he says, My Dad is Bees. And I'll explain that in a minute if you haven't got to that twist yet in the episode or haven't watched it yet. Um, but again, spoilers. So if you don't want to know, you know, turn away now. But I love that line. I thought that was great. <laughs> so I guess May might have wrote that because I think on her Twitter account, that's in her Twitter handle. It says like May, my dad is B's cat or something like that, which is kind of funny. So I'm assuming that's her line that she wrote because uh, it's, it's a funny line. It's a good line. Um, so the episode kind of starts off and we left, uh, we pick up where, where we last left off, which is uh, Dr. Connors is now the head of um, Horizon High. And there's like these little drones that are going around, uh, you know, policing the students. They all have to wear matching uniforms now. Uh, it's definitely a different environment. It seems like maybe a few weeks have passed, maybe something like that. And uh, and so he's in charge and he's brought in a new staff. So you actually see Anya's um, older stepsister. And she's like, hey, I thought you were like in the Everglades or you were down you know, South, South America somewhere, like working on a project. And she's like, no, I wanted to be around my sister and I heard you were here and, you know, and doing well. So I wanted to come back when they offered, you know, the new job, uh, you know, like a new opening at this place. And so I decided to take the job and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So so the sister is back in. And so Anya has like a kind of an emotional um, obstacle in this episode because her sister is kind of working for Connors who they quickly learn is kind of maybe still the bad guy, um, but they don't know how deep that goes yet. And then meanwhile, Gwen finds out that, uh, that or and Peter find out that at the school, Connors is hiding Jackal formula um, and, and transporting it within the school somewhere. And all the kids who are super smart kids, like Grady, he makes an appearance and, you know, Miles, Gwen, Anya, and Peter, they all and other kids in the school are all working on little projects that Dr. Connors isn't telling them what it's for, but he's like, all right, you work on this and you work on this. And Peter and Miles and everyone are starting to put together that, hey, do you think we're making like components for something? Could all these projects be put together into a machine? And Miles like, if it is, it's something that like, I don't really understand. And you know, Gwen and all of them like, yeah, like I, I can kind of get, maybe these two components could make this, but I don't know. And maybe, and Peter like, maybe they, these two can make this. And um, so there's a big picture thing going on here and they're all, complicit in it all the students are essentially making something that's gonna go towards dr connors and whatever he's working on so gwen and peter decide all right let's dress in our spider costumes and let's track down um they took this my, miles took this motherboard from this robot that he uh turned into a discotheque <laughs> at the beginning of the episode which is kind of funny just showing miles is like hey i'm smart but i like to have fun too so he like reprogrammed his ro robot to like play like uh, to have like a strobe light on it and, and play music and stuff, which was kind of funny. Um, but then when that robot got crushed and then like Grady did a project where he made acid and that like caused a seismic, uh, you know, a calamity in the school. Uh, and the kids had to like use their spider powers to like save everybody without them seeing it, which was kind of neat. There was really cool elements in this episode. But what I really liked the most was that Anya, Gwen, Peter and Miles all had 
an emotional stake and obstacle in this story because one, their teacher and mentor, Max, was dismissed from their school. So now they have to all work for who they believe is now, you know, a villain for sure. They're like, well, he turned into a lizard before, but maybe he's a good guy now, just a mean good guy. But they're like, no, he's definitely up to no good. So they, so Miles and Anya follow him into his lab while Peter and Gwen go and look for the jackal. And Peter and Gwen get stuck in, a, you know, one of the jackal's labs. They almost drown. They get out. And that's when they, they're surrounded by like shark clones or whatever. And after they defeat them, they learn, you know, that Miles, or not Miles, I keep calling him Miles. I guess they didn't want to have two Miles on the show. So the Jackal, also Raymond Stacy, I guess, um, he is working on, you know, he's got his project. He got his last vial and he's like, all right, you're never going to learn what I was doing here because I'm going to flood the lab and I'm going to escape. And so he does. But before, um, you know, Spider-Man and Spider-Gwen escape, she decides to go over to a computer before it gets completely engulfed in water and she looks up what he was working on and they find something out and they learn something. Um, so I thought that was kind of clever that they set that up and you're like, oh, what did they learn? And then later on when, uh, you know, Jackal gets back to um, the lab at Horizon, you find out that him and, uh, the, you know, Dr. Connors are working together for Norman Osborn. Um, and who we thought died, we thought he got burned up. And when Peter and Harry like saved each other and got out and they left uh, Norman for dead. Well, he did lose an arm and a, a leg apparently. Um, so he's been in this chamber that's been kind of keeping him alive until all the students build all these computer parts and things. So now Connors has put all that stuff together. It's some kind of healing chamber. It heals Norman, but then he added the extra element of the symbiote seed and the sliver of, um, you know, uh, Venom symbiote that was on it and then mixed it with Max Modell's work on the synthetic white Spider-Man symbiote. And he put all that together, puts it on him and he transforms into the Dark Goblin. Um, so that's pretty much what the, you know, the kids have to fight. But then Anya makes a discovery where she finds out that her older sister, uh, his stepsister is working for Norman Osborn willingly and that she has a robot spider suit where she calls the Tarantula and starts fighting Anya. So, you know, Norman's like, all right, I'm loose now. And I'm going to destroy you, Peter Parker. But I also have Anya's sister to fight Anya. I have the Jackal to fight his niece in uh, Gwen. And so all the villains know all the heroes' secret identities. And he goes, and I also have Swarm here who's going to take on Miles. And Miles is like, really? I got to fight the B guy? Well, in their battle, uh, you know, Swarm is explaining why he has done all these things. He's like, yeah, I helped Norman fund his operation and get into Horizon. By doing the Fight Club thing, we made a ton of money off that, and that all went to Norman and his project and everything. And he goes, and I'm doing that because uh, you, uh, Miles Spider-Man, he's like, well, he doesn't know Miles is Spider-Man. That's the only reveal that isn't made to him, is he just knows about this Spider-Man is different from the other Spider-Man, but he doesn't know it's Miles. So he's like, you've been in my neighborhood uh, fighting like giant spiders and all these things, and those things cause damage and ruin this neighborhood. And I'm afraid because my son is really smart. He goes to a good school and, uh, and I don't want him to die because you superheroes attract danger to you. And he's like, so I'm here to help take you all down. So that way things can just go back to just regular corruption and regular bad people, which I think is kind of a silly logic, you know, because, you know, uh, if you have a son in a world without superheroes, they're still likely to something bad to happen to them as is if there is a world with superheroes in my in my mind. I mean, maybe there's not as constant of danger, but there's still dangers out there all the time. So when he says that, Miles starts putting two to two together. So he takes off his mask instead of fighting Swarm because he has been unsuccessful in fighting Swarm anyway. Swarm keeps turning into bees and beating up Miles. So Miles finally just takes off his mask and says, Dad, is that you? And I honestly did not see that coming. Although I gotta say, we said in the fourth review, fourth episode review, that uh, Swarm looked a little bit like Prowler. And I know Prowler is uh, typically Miles' uncle in various universes, or it's Hobie Brown. It's like one of the two. So it was kind of neat that uh, that his dad kind of has a Prowler look and he's a supervillain and they made him Swarm. I thought that was pretty cool because um, I think the actual Swarm in the comics is like a German scientist or something. And so this, I kind of like, I was like, oh, this is nice and it ties into Miles. And it gives him just as much of an emotional arc that Anya has because she has to fight her stepsister. Um, and then Gwen, she has to fight her, you know, her uncle. And then Peter, who has to fight Norman Osborn, you know, his uh, kind of a surrogate dad in some regards. Uh, not really so much in this universe, um, but in other universes. Like, you, we just know that connection between Peter and Norman. Um, but luckily, Peter doesn't have to fight Norman on his own. 
him and Gwen, when they hacked, you know, when Gwen hacked in that computer, they found out that Jacko was working for the Goblin. So Peter made a call before he showed up to fight the Goblin. And so Harry Osborn shows up as Hobgoblin, which was really cool. Um, I thought Harry showing up, sorry, I have the hiccups a little bit. Uh, so when Harry showed up as Hobgoblin, I thought that was really awesome. And he comes in, he's got a, like a lightsaber sword. And there's even a Star Wars moment where, you know, Norman as a dark goblin peels the face back of the symbiote and shows Norman's face. And he's like, son, I'm so proud of you. Like, just help me destroy Peter. And once we wipe out Spider-Man, there'll be no one to stand in our way and we can rebuild our empire of Oscorp and, and, you know, take back this world that belongs to us. And it was like straight out of Star Wars. And, uh, and Harry's like, you know, no, I, I refuse. Like much like Luke Skywalker did. And so they have a big battle. So Miles takes off his mask, reveals himself to his dad. Swarm decides, I can't do this. I almost killed you. I almost killed other people. Uh, what have I done? I was doing all this because I thought I was protecting you. And here you're the, you're out there saving people. And it, 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 it kind of breaks him. It kind of breaks Miles' father. So he, you know, buzzes off. <laughs> uh, but there is a line later where, uh, where everyone's like confessing, like, oh, I had to fight my uncle today. I had to fight my stepsister. And Miles is like, my dad is bees. <laughs> so I was like, that's cool. So that's, I think, May Cat's line. Um, but then Anya, that's the other surprise. So I was, I didn't see the, 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 the swarm identity reveal. I didn't see that coming. There was another reveal that I didn't see coming. Um, uh, you know, Anya finds out that her older sister or stepsister is actually not her older stepsister. So when she beats up the giant robot, she's able to, um, hit a button on the suit of the villain and wipe away the imagery of her, you know, of, of her older stepsister. And you find out that Anya's older stepsister that works at Horizon is actually not her older stepsister. Her older stepsister is still in South America working on her project. She's been fighting the chameleon. Uh, so I thought that was a great reveal and I did not see that coming either. So this was a, a solid episode as far as like, okay, this is a regular Spider-Man episode outside of the Maximum Venom stuff. Has a slight tie into the Maximum Venom stuff because of the seed. And then they make the synthetic costume for Dark Goblin. At the end, Dark Goblin takes other samples of the synthetic uh, organism and injects himself and he becomes like a uh, Venom the Madness size. You know, he's got extra legs and there's extra eyes on him and stuff. And I was like, it was a pretty cool design. It actually looked kind of neat. So all the spider kids teamed up together to fight him and it was awesome. And there was like, Harry's like with the lightsaber sword is like stabbing uh, Norman Osborn, the Dark Goblin, and cut off his arms at one point. I was like, dang, this is like intense. And they're like, they cut off his arms, beat him up and put him back in his chamber. And then they had, meanwhile, while Sp Spider-Man and uh, Harry are doing most of the legwork. All the other uh, spider people are working on their projects. Because remember, they all helped build the machine, essentially. So they know how to reverse engineer it. So they're back there reprogramming everything. They push Norman into the uh, chamber again, shut it, and then strip away and destroy the synthetic symbiote and uh, the seed and just kind of melt away. And then you just have Norman Osborn left. I think his arm and his leg have grown back, uh, are still there, but he's, um, but he's, defeated. And meanwhile, Dr. Connors, he's been working for Norman, um, but he, uh, in exchange for serums, and Norman, I guess, promised him, hey, once we, once I become the Dark Goblin and we succeed and destroy all the spider people, I will give you a permanent cure um, and help you grow your arm back and using this machine that's going to help me grow my limbs back. So that was the promise he made to Connors, and then it turns out the cure part was a lie. He's like, yeah, I can maybe grow your arm back, but you're not going to ever not be a lizard again like I don't I'm not going to cure you from that uh, he's like I'll just give you medicine for the rest of your life and Connors was not happy about that so he turned into lizard and got in a few shots on Norman Osborn before then running away so uh so the episode does end with a couple plot threads still out there swarm is still out there um uh, you know Dr. Connors as a lizard is still out there so I don't know if they'll be able to wrap all that up in the next episode. Again, I, I, my fears of the last episode are, are coming back in. Like we we did get a synopsis reveal of the last episode. They talked about, um, you know, uh, a Venom. They mentioned Venom. I think the final episode is even called Maximum Venom, which is funny because it's called Spider-Man's Marvel Spider-Man's Maximum Venom, Maximum Venom Part 1 and 2. <laughs> it's a lot of Maximum Venoms in there. Um, but uh, but I guess they're gonna kind of maybe wrap that up. Uh, I do I did have a lot of people ask me if this is the final season. I don't know. I remember reading that somewhere that this might be the third and final season, but I have no idea. I we did talk about that. And I think I did ask Kevin Burke and Doc Wyatt, you know, back when um, they did the interview, and I, they didn't give me a really direct answer. And that's either because a they they're most likely because they couldn't answer it. Um, it's probably because 
they like, you know, they, they need the press for that. They need to, like, they need like a major outlet as much as major as they can. They're not going to reveal that on a, on a Venom vlog uh, episode. They want to put that out there in like a trade or, or a big piece of new, you know, news article somewhere um, so that it gets the most traction. Um, so they're not going to say that, you know, on a show like mine. So, so I don't know. Like, I honestly don't know if this is the last season or if we're going to get another one because maybe Swarm going away and, and Doc Connors, like, escaping. Maybe that's something they're going to, like, touch on in another season. Or maybe that's something they'll just quickly wrap up in the next episode and then end with the, you know, the, the big battle. So we did get the synopsis for the next episode. It does mention that the episode is called Maximum Venom and that there will be a couple new symbiotes coming to Earth. We watched in that little short film that they released that there is a uh, that Venom has three sisters uh, and that they're the four children of Null. And apparently we're going to get uh, Scream, uh, Scorn and Mania uh, all in the next episode uh, voiced by Meg Donnelly. And, and I can't remember the other actresses names. Once again, we went a whole nother episode without Mary Jane. So it's like, oh, we got Felicia Day for Mary Jane. And she's literally had like three scenes in five episodes so far. So that's a little bit of a bummer for me. I was kind of hoping for more there. So if they do a fourth season, I hope they do have more Mary Jane in there played by Felicia Day. And hopefully they wrap up the, the Miles stuff and the Dr. Connor stuff next season, if there is a next season. Um, I would personally not like it if they rushed through and wrapped all that up in the next episode but at the same time i'm like well i don't know if they're going to make a full hour be able to make a full hour out of just the venom sisters um but we'll see yeah i guess we'll see and i don't know if we'll see null or not like you know we'll have to wait till we get a teaser uh, a trailer or some kind of you know whatever but i do know that this is going to be airing the last weekend of october on disney um xd so and then the next day it'll be up on hulu so if you're around on halloween uh, and if you missed the episode, you know, maybe that's something you can watch on Halloween is the finale of Maximum Venom. I'll try to watch it as soon as I can once the episode airs. And we'll obviously do another video like this where we're discussing it and talking about it. And I go beat by beat on the stuff that I liked and didn't like. And, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll dive into it at that time. But for this episode, I got to say, like, even though it wasn't as symbiote heavy as I would have liked it to be, even though I know people are going to go, what are you talking about? Like, from from epi from like the twenty minute marker to the the twenty from the twenty minute marker to the forty four minute marker, um, you know you had Dark Goblin, so there was a symbiote there, and it's like yeah, technically there was, but it wasn't like, you know, like I don't know, I guess I just had a different misconception of this show based on the the marketing and the um, the toys and everything. I just thought it was going to be like, you know, like cu a couple episodes of just like you know the end of the world essentially, symbiotes taking over. And all these heroes having to battle against it. And they did all that in one episode, which was a good episode. Episode three was a good episode, but I guess I was kind of hoping for more of that and, and more struggles with the heroes having the symbiotes and seeing Cap like trying to resist it and seeing Iron Man trying to resist it. Like, I guess I was just hoping to see a little bit more drama and, and fun in regards to that. Um, but uh, I guess I got to give them points for subverting my expectations as well. But, uh, but yeah, I think the marketing just went crazy with, uh, you know, the, the symbiote invasion stuff and made all the toys of all that and didn't really like focus on because now I want a swarm toy <laughs> like I've always wanted a swarm toy and I think they made one before in the 90s where he just was like yellow dots and stuff like but he was an actual figure but he was just bumpy or whatever but um I would actually like a cool swarm toy where it's like an actual figure and then maybe you can clip on him like this swarm of like bees like you know like all these like little dots or like bees on like this hard plastic like painted on and just have, like having them coming out of his back or coming out of his like, chest like he's turning into bees like i would love a toy like that like that would be so cool even though he looks a little too prowlerish for me um the identity of who he is was kind of neat actually for me in this episode i really liked that it added some emotional weight to miles story and that now miles has this mission uh this personal mission to go out and save his father um and bring him back from you know the the brink of the decisions he's made and the, the harm he's done I think that's great. I think that's a great story. Um, so yeah, kudos, you know, to everyone who works on this show. First episode I liked, third episode I liked, second episode I was definitely critical of, but ultimately I, I saw the point in it. Fourth episode I really didn't like at all. This episode I actually did like. I would say I'd probably give this one like a three and a half out of uh, five because the character stuff in it was pretty good, actually. Um, and everyone had a little thing to do. Connors had a thing to do. Grady had a thing to do. They bring Max Modell back at the end to run the school again. They brought back the board members to show, because conveniently, you know, Norman Osborn revealed his whole master plan on camera. Uh, and so they were able to show that to the board and get Max Modell reinstated. 
So, you know, they did put a nice little button on a lot of things in this episode, so that does make it primed and ready for a Venom finale to wrap up this season. But there are still the loose threads of Dr. Connors and Swarm, so I'm kind of curious. Are they going to cram that in the next episode, or are we going to get a fourth season of this and they're going to do that later? Um, what are your thoughts? What are your hopes? Let me know down below. Did you watch this episode? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments below, and we'll continue our conversation as always down there. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching this episode. And again, you know, uh, this show, I'm a little bit more optimistic for the final episode, especially now that the synopsis is out and they talk a little bit about Venom and the sisters and all that stuff. I'm like, okay, good. That's, that's good for me. Like, I, cause I was really worried this season was going to be like two episodes of symbiotes and four episodes of something else. Although I just, I did keep hoping if you look at my previous reviews, I kept hoping that, okay, even if symbiotes aren't in episodes four and five, if we at least get them in six, I'll be a little happier. I still stand by that. If then now that we know we are going to get symbiotes, we're going to get the female symbiotes in the next episode. I'm kind of curious how they're going to do them, how they're going to portray them, uh, what their goals ultimately are going to be. Um, I'm assuming it's going to have something to do with wiping out the earth, but I'm, I'm curious, you know, are, are they just mad at the earth because the earth is abusing the seed and constantly recreating like venom in some ways with the jackal stuff making a venom clone with the synthetic symbiote like is that an abomination to them like is that why they're coming to earth or do they just want to complete the invasion that was started um or do they still serve no or do they not serve no like all that stuff i can't wait to find out in the next episode so again thank you guys for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace